Hello again, Jules fans. Welcome back to Jules and the Blood TV. It is Monday review time, which means looking back at Saturday's very creditable draw at Fratton Park. The final score down on the south coast was Portsmouth 1, Gillingham 1. A game we should have won in the second half. John Akindi's massive, massive chance in injury time. Done everything right. Shrugged off his defender, got the ball out of his feet. Craig McGillaray made a really good save with his legs, unfortunately, and denied us all three points, which would have been perhaps justification for our second half performance. First period, Portsmouth were decent, probably had the better of the chances. Hit the post really early on after we'd had a, a very early penalty claim waved away. Jack Bonham made a couple of good saves. Goal was decent from a Portsmouth point of view. Marcus Harness jinking his way down our left-back area. Could we have done more to defend it? I say yes. Uh, three players, Ollie Lee, Tommy O'Connor and Conor Ogilvy all dangled a foot and did not make a proper challenge. Uh, and Sean Raggett headed home to give the home side the lead. Um, but yeah, it was a really good game. It wasn't a classic, but it was certainly intriguing and a good watch. Um, yeah, um, Guy Whittingham was uh, an interesting listen as well, wasn't he? Um, I think if you if you watch the game on iFollow and listen to Guy, you'd probably think that we were playing um, Pep Guardiola's prime Barcelona from 2009 to 11 when they won two Champions Leagues. If you'd um, turned the audio commentary off, though, you'd have watched a game between two hard-working, battling League One sides, both who went direct when they had to, who at times both got it down and tried to play. Us predominantly through Carl Dempsey and Jordan Graham, who absolutely annihilated the left-back all afternoon. And... Uh, Pompey when they got it down as well through the likes of Marcus Harness and Ronan Curtis. And uh, like I say, it was an intriguing watch without being a classic. Um, could we have won its second period, like I mentioned? Yes. Um, but I think overall, a draw was probably the fairest results. Um, but we did have better chances second half. And we had that John Akindi one, like I've mentioned. Carl Dempsey clipped a post for Dane Oliver and John Akindi both headed over. For Dane's was probably the better chance of the two. Um, but if someone had said to me after Tuesday night's defeat at Wimbledon, can you go to Fratton Park and pick up a point, I'd have bit their arm off. So a really good response from the Jills um, and a really good point at a ground now where we've not lost in our last four visits, only conceding twice. But that's enough about that game. We now move on to Tuesday night. We have the first of back-to-back -back home fixtures. Um, and Tuesday, it is Russell Martin bringing this team to Kent. MK Dons will arrive in Kent, sitting pretty much next to us in the Skybet League One table. They've had a pretty similar campaign to us and we'll be looking to find more consistency and push on into that top half and potentially the top 10 in the remaining games left. Um, but before I talk about the game in more detail, I am going to leave you with the thoughts of Liam Connolly. He's an MK Dons fan and podcast host. You can find him. He hosts the At MK1 podcast which I have made an appearance on as well, if you have the time to listen to that. So thanks for Liam coming on the channel and also inviting me onto the pod. It was a really good chat. Um, I will show, leave you now with his thoughts and all the inside information that you need on Russell Martin's side. Hi, Matt. Uh, Liam from the MQ1 podcast here. Uh, thank you very much for inviting me on the channel. Took everything Milton Keynes Dons. Let's get stuck into it. Um, currently 14th in League One table. A pretty rough start for us to start the season, to be honest. Um, we were sort of around the relegation zone for the most part of it. Of course, our first win came against yourselves, 2-0. Um, and we didn't really start kicking into gear until about December time. Um, of course, got the occasion on top against Sunderland, but really it was Christmas slash the turn of the new year that really saw us kick on. And uh, February was the real time where we started to pick up loads of results. Um, and that's seen us rise to fifth in the form table. So out of the last six games, we've only lost a one, and that's against Shrewsbury, 4-2, in the last midweek round of fixtures it just been. So uh, some key players for the Dons. Uh, would be, be criminal of me not to start with number 10, Scott Fraser. Uh, 11 goal contributions this season. Just an all-round terrific player, really. I don't know how he's ended up here uh Milton Keynes. Um I'd be very surprised if he's here uh, come the start of next season. And uh yeah, a terrific player, box box midfielder, um, and is easily should easily win player of the season if he keeps us up until uh, May 100 uh, percent A few January recruits who've come in and done really well for us. Uh, the first of them being a Manchester United Loney in the number 12, Ethan Laird. 
uh, played right wing back for us. Um, first month or so, I was a bit iffy about him. Uh, I felt he lacked defensive positioning and responsibility. I felt like he was so focused about being an attacking player that he's completely forgot about his defensive side. But I feel the past two or three games, and especially Saturday, we really saw him do a bit of both. And he was unlucky not to get something for from that game because uh, he was terrific. And the other January recruit is a number six, Harry Darling. Um, brick wall at the back, basically. Um, three man match wall since he joined from Cambridge um, and sort of plays that centre centre back role in a 3 5 2 for us. And uh, yeah, we were kind of worried about when Richard Keo left, who was going to come in and, you know, keep our defence together, really. And uh, Harry Darling's done an amazing job of that so far. And uh, finally, the guy who's uh, leading the goal contributions for the team in uh, Cameron Jerome, number 35. Uh, the 34 year old is everything this process oozes to be honest in terms of hard work being hard working um, but grit um, experience and of course goals and assists uh, tremendous player um, of course he's got hundreds hundreds of appearances above this league and in the Premier League of course and he's uh, yeah I don't know how he's ended up here again uh, yeah, and, and of course he he had a championship offer on deadline day but he didn't take it just because of you know, transit one day, how it is, you know, uh, clubs can knock on your door last second. And uh, yeah, lucky to have him for another six months. And uh, yeah, he's hopefully going to keep on keeping on. Um, in terms of stat lineup, I've gone for a 3 5 2 formation. That's how typically we like to set up. Um, they haven't really pivoted from it too much. So, the goalkeeper is number 13, Andrew Fisher. Um, hasn't really been another keeper that we've seen that has incorporated the ball playing and playing out the back that Fisher has done. So confident on the ball and we're lucky to have him uh, for an extended period after he signed on his contract extension in, in January window. Uh, back three, uh, centre-backs will be Warren O'Hora, number 15, uh, Harry Darling, number six, and Dean Lewington, number three. Uh, kind of picked themselves at the moment. A uh, really solid partnership from what we've seen for the most part and we're lucky on Saturday not to get a clean sheet. Uh, wing backs, Ethan Laird, number 12, and probably Zach Jules, number four. Uh, Dan Harvey uh, started left wing back on Saturday against Oxford, but he limped off at half time and uh, Jules came on for him. So you'd expect Jules to come back in and uh, take that spot again. Uh, Centre mids, uh, 24, Jordan Houghton, I think, will start on the pivot. Uh, Sermon's played there a fair bit recently with David Kasumi out injured. Um, and I think House deserves a start, basically. Uh, had two minutes, 30 minute cameos recently since coming back from injury. And it's been positive in both. Um, so I think with the you know sort of high turnaround of fixtures that uh, House will get a start and Sarah will get a rest. And then the two in front of him will be Matt O'Reilly, number 17. And of course, Scott Fraser, number 10. Uh, Matt O'Reilly, just as technical as Fraser is, um, has good eye for a pass and is fairly clinical player as well actually for midfield so you don't want to give him too much space and then the two up front have gone with uh, Joe Mason number 20 and of course Cammy Giroud number 35 uh, kind of hard to pick the strikers at the moment we've kind of we've got four strikers uh, of course Mason Jerome and then uh, Charlie Brown the youngster in from Chelsea and Will Grigg of course from Sunderland who are all playing well at the moment so it's a real headache for the manager who to pick I picked Mason and Jerome just because they're pressing and I feel they've both got the necessary experience to really thrive in this type of game. Uh, Gillingham, you know, as you know, are very, it's quite a gritty team and they're not, not maybe not as fancy as in terms of on the ball. So uh, we're going to need that type of striker up front to win us those tactical free kicks and try and uh, bully your defence a little bit. So in terms of prediction, uh, well, one for me is the score I'm going to go with. I feel it'll be a score draw. Um, you know, it seems to be when we play each other that Whoever, whichever team was won the last game, which was us 2 0, tend to struggle the next time. A bit of a yo yo effect. And uh, I see that happening here. Um, I went to Gillingham in the game of 2019 in your place before Christmas. And uh, not only was it freezing, but we got dominated, quite frankly. Uh, apart from that, Alex Gilby won the goal. Um, so, yeah, I, I don't particularly like going to Gillingham. Um, not not in terms of the, the way they, but in terms of the team just playing there on the pitch. And uh, yeah, I feel like we have a difficult game, which uh, I'll happily take a point from uh, to keep us going in the league. And thanks again, Matt, for having me on. Uh, best of luck the rest of the season, of course, apart from Tuesday night. And I look forward to speaking to you soon on our podcast.
Cheers, mate, for the insight. Like I say, I appreciate you taking the time out of your day to send me that little recording. Really is appreciated and gives us Jules fans some good knowledge of what we can expect on Tuesday evening when the game kicks off. Uh, in terms of the last six for form for both sides, Jules in their last half dozen have picked up seven points from 18. That's come through two wins, a draw and three defeats. Uh, last six for MK, uh, 11 points from 18, three wins, um, two draws and a single loss. So they're in decent nick and they arrive at the Priest Field. In terms of home and away, Jules have got an identical record to their overall. That is two wins, three defeats and a draw, giving us seven points from the last 18 available at the Priest Field. And on the road, MK Dons, four wins and two defeats. Uh, don't fancy drawing uh, away from their own patch at the moment. So 12 points from 18. Um, They've got good players that can hurt us, so we're going to have to be at it again. It's no good thinking that the Portsmouth performance means we can just turn up and, and win the game. That's not the case. Uh, Cameron Jerome, who I said at the start of the season, I thought was a risk, um, but he's been spot on. He's got 10 in 22 in League One so far, so he's proved to be a really decent addition to a to an MK Don squad. Um, Joe Mason's got five in just 11 starts, so he's another one we'll need to keep an eye on if he is involved. Scott Fraser from midfield, nine in 27. He just needs one more to get to double figures. Uh, a player that I thought would end up going to the championship when he left Burton, so a really good pick-up for, for Russell Martin's men. Uh, Harry Darling at centre-half coming in the January transfer window. He was part of a very good Cambridge side in the first half of the campaign, and he slotted in to that back three that MK Don's playing. That will certainly give us a different challenge because... We don't come up against a lot of sides that play that system. Predominantly, you play teams that play 4-4-2 or 4-2-3-1 slash 4-3-3. So, be interesting how we line up. Do we try and exploit space in behind their wing-backs if they push on? Do we stick to the diamond and remain solid and compact and keep ourselves in the game? Certainly a couple of questions that Steve Evans will have to ask before picking his 11. Um, if I get to play manager, I will go with this 11. The team news, obviously, there is no difference from, from what it was Saturday. I've not heard of any knocks picked up. So there'll be no Dominic Samuel or no Callum Slattery. Therefore, my 11 would be, and it would just be one change from Saturday's draw if everyone is fit enough to start. So I'll go Jack Bonham in goal, a back four of Ryan Jackson, Jack Tucker, Robbie Cundy and Connor Ogilvy. My diamond would be Stuart O'Keefe at the base, uh, Carl Dempsey from the right, Tommy O'Connor from the left and Jordan Graham in the 10. I am dropping Ollie Lee for this one. I think he's just been a little off the pace in the last couple. My front two would be for Dane Oliver, who I thought was absolutely superb at Portsmouth at the weekend. Scored a good poacher's goal. Probably could have won it for us. But overall, I thought he was really, really good. And John Akindi, who had a really positive impact from the bench, can probably think he was a little bit harshly dropped from the start in 11 after a decent run of form, which has seen him score six in his last 14, with his goals coming every 120 minutes or so, which is a decent strike rate. Um, so them two up top for me. It means we can start with the diamond, and if not, we can go to a more traditional 4-4-2, with Tom O'Connor going wide on the left and Jordan Graham wide on the right, and a central pairing of Dempsey and O'Keefe. My bench, looking at things would be Sasha Bastien, Robbie McKenzie, Matty Willock, James Morton, Alex MacDonald, if he's uh, well enough and recovered from illness, which saw him miss Saturday, um, Ollie Lee and Tyreek Johnson. I think there's good options there. Obviously, Ollie Lee, good player that can come on and stretch the game and pick up little pockets of space and influence things. Tyreek Johnson, we start need to start seeing more of. I'm sure there's a good player in there, but we've just not seen enough of it. Um, right, the big question as always is score prediction. Um, always tends to be a few goals in games between us and MK Dons. So on that basis and the fact that we reacted well to the Wimbledon defeat, I am going to go for Jules to pinch this by two goals to one. And my goal scorers are going to be Kyle Dempsey and Jordan Graham. Right, that is enough from me today. Um, I hope your first day back at work after the weekend has not been too strenuous. Um, we've got the game to look forward to Tuesday night, so we'll be back for that for the Match Day Live, as always. Uh, please keep doing all that you do, liking, subscribing, retweeting and everything else. You know the drill by now. Uh, thank you to everyone who donated to my daughter's uh, charity. It is now over £600, which is truly staggering. We're both truly humbled by all the support, so thank you very much. Um, like I say, be back Tuesday with a Match Day Live. Until then, up the jewels. Jump.